G'day guys, back with you at Circle, and today I want to talk about some bits I was sent from Conversion World. Now, a link will be in the description below the video, as always, whenever I do a product review. And, uh, well, first of all, it's well packaged, and it came with a few of these little booklets that describe the product, reviews, different addresses you can contact them on. So, very nice little inclusion right there. So, where do I start the comparisons? I think the fairest way to do this is to take some legitimate Forge World products and compare them side by side to show both the scale and the quality. So, first one I'll start off with is some Forge World chain axes. There you go, that's how they come. Uh, granted, this should probably have a handle on it. But this is quite old. This is from an old project of mine. So it's a little bit damaged. But you can see it's still attached to the gate. Lots of uh, flow over from the mold. This chain axe comes from Conversion World. So you can see that's pretty nice. Exec uh, execution axe, something like that, uh, definitely looks like a cutter a weapon for the world eaters. So side by side, there's the quality. This is how it came. I haven't cleaned this up. This is exactly what it was like out of the packet. No gate, no mold overlap, no nothing. Perfectly formed teeth, and I can't see any air bubbles. Uh, there's actually some detail sculpted in. Yeah, very nice. So. Uh, yeah, Conversion World definitely has me on the axes. Next up, we'll look at the, uh, hmm, let's go chain swords. So I have two examples here of chain swords from Forge World. A despoiler chain sword for Mark IV and a, another one for Mark II. Very nice. This is the one that arrived from Conversion World. Very much a weapon I would be happy to give a Space Wolf Commander. It's got like a Celtic trim on it and a bit of a wolf's head in the very end of the sword. Beautiful, also a lovely grip on it. So even as something like an objective marker maybe, like planted in a, a base or something to mark an objective, this would be a pretty cool relic weapon. So, side by side. These weapons are also much thinner, less bulky, side on. And uh, again, straight out of the packet, all clean teeth, there's no additional material like there is on the Forge World sword. Next up, let's look at some power swords. So, I've got the... Uh, Sort of a gladius type sword here from Forge World. Nice little weapon, straight off the sprue. Also have a bit of a tawar or scimitar. Again, straight out of Forge World. You can see, however, quite distorted side on, so that'll need some heating before it can go onto a miniature. Also got a sort of broadsword here, which again, quite distorted. Same sprue as the scimitar. Well, from Conversion World, I have a rather long gladius, sort of like a Roman longsword, really. So side by sides. Not a bad little weapon. I also have some quite large swords. This one here reminds me very much of the Custodian's Blades in that it actually has a firearm built in, but it's much more delicate looking. Uh, this is the sort of thing I wish the Custodes had, so yeah, what an improvement that is. It's a sword that actually looks like you could use the thing. It doesn't look like a uh, clouds weapon from Final Fantasy. 
this one here would definitely be something like a Kelbinite uh, war blade or Kelbinite longsword. It's big. So yeah, there's a comparison with the Forge World 1 and side on, pretty damn straight. Pretty damn straight, straight out the packet. Another one, we have the Blade of Salty Tears. The hashtag fuck Dean Morris special. This is beautiful, this sword. This is one of my favorite ones that came in the set. This looks like a Paragon Blade or, yeah, the Blade of Salty Tears for the Blood Angels players in 30K. Again, size-wise, it's a big, beautiful blade. It looks like it belongs to a character love sorry just a little detail I've got to uh, hype up how cool is that double four going down the blade down the center of the blade just beautiful and last but not least it's like a uh, like a copish uh, not a uh, copish like a can't think of the word now. I'm an armorer and I've forgotten my weapons. Like the old Greek swords, like they used in the uh, the days when they fought Persia, for example. Not a Xiphon, but um, uh, it'll come to me after this video, no doubt. It's pretty cool. Has this uh, sort of twisted grip on it. Would make an excellent blade, I think, for Emperor's children. Like a Falcata, something like that. And in comparison with the sort of Tawa scimitar type sword, yeah, this thing definitely would make a fantastic Paragon blade for, or a Mastercrafter blade for the uh, Emperor's children. All right, moving on. Emperor's children, Phoenix Spear, straight out of Forge World. Very glossy resin on it, nasty sort of stuff. You can see quite a bit of mold slip down the blade. This is typical of all the weapons I've got out of Forge World, and of course it's more twisted than, well, me. So, yeah. Here's a blade, which I think is comparable. It had a conversion world. Now, again, it has sort of these blood drop symbols around here. And you can see it is distorted as well. But, um, well, in comparison, yeah, not really, not really that distorted. Maybe a mill off center at the tip compared to, well, <laughs> yeah. And of course it, it has clean mold lines all around it. Pretty cool grip. Um, be interesting to see like a uh, Blood Angel spearing someone or even an Empress Children player using this. You could quite easily just gently carve off these Blood Angel symbols and use this as a Phoenix spear on something like a Praetor which would be pretty flash. What else have we got? Well, the last two weapons I can't really compare. The first is a shield, which I'll just drop apparently. But you can see it's uh, very finely detailed. Like an Age of Sigma symbol in the center up here, which I will point out with said spear. This is pretty neat. Um, you could use this, I suppose, for Age of Sigma. I'd be tempted just to cut this emblem off with a fine scalpel and maybe put a bit of etched brass in there or a decal for the Salamanders, and this would make a great storm shield for a Salamanders Praetor. Cool little hexagonal pattern on the inside as well. And there's also a couple of hands supplied, which are much nicer and cleaner than mine. I'm sorry I have uh, working class hands as always, I apologise, but I work with steel. I'm never going to have pretty fingers. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Very last item is a Egyptian style blade. I'm not exactly sure where I'd use this. I don't mean that in a bad way. Perhaps a Terminator character, because it is quite a large weapon. 
or a two-handed pose on some sort of power armored character. But this is definitely something you could use as a force weapon or even something like a cool objective marker again like planted in the ground. Leave it leaning up against something. It's uh, yeah, it's just beautiful and yeah, pretty pretty damn flat too. So there you go. Conversion world. Some beautiful parts they've sent out. Uh, yeah, it compares very favorably and I think fairly with Forge World's products because let's face it With the downsizing of the parts available for say the heresy range It's important that we look at alternatives What are other cool sort of items that can be used to replace those? What are cool ways of getting out of characters of being unique creating some individuality in our armies really showing them off and I think these are some great examples. Anyway, I'm Mac with the Outer Circle. Thank you all for watching and thank you to Conversion World for sending out these parts. I'll have to put them on something and actually show later on what they look like when they're actually used. Anyway, catch you all next video.